Okay, so this is the discussion of the dependent variable in the context of the data analysis control assessment task. So the dependent variable is, is the variable which you're going to measure um, for each value of the independent variable. So this is the one that you need to repeat. And the standard advice is three times and then take an average. So we're just going to go through in a similar way that we did in the independent variable video. We're going to go through and look at three examples of identifying the dependent variable and then give you three uh, questions on this. So example one, a student is testing to see how changing the temperature affects the rate of a chemical reaction. So we're going to think about, well, which one are we going to be uh, unable to control ourselves and therefore is going to be our dependent variable? Well, it's going to be the rate of the chemical reaction. We're measuring how the temperature affects this, right? Uh, we haven't talked about how we might measure rate, but that's not really what we're worried about here. We're just identifying the variable, okay? So, rate of the chemical reaction is the dependent variable in example one. Example two, a student is testing to see if the freezing temperature of water is affected by the mass of salt dissolved in it. And again, clearly, you are going to be changing the mass of salt, so the dependent variable is going to be the other one, the freezing temperature of the water. Okay, you're going to repeat the experiment three times with the same mass of salt and see um, what the freezing temperature is each time. And then you're going to change the mass of salt and do it again. So the freezing temperature is your dependent variable here, the one that you are going to measure, all right, as, an, as a consequence of changing your dependent variable, your independent variable, sorry. So, number three, a student is doing an experiment to test the relationship between the range of an arrow fired from a bow and the tension force in the bowstring. Well, again, range of the arrow fired is going to be what you're going to do, right? So you're going to repeat for the same tension force, you'll repeat it three times and measure the range of the arrow, how far it's flown, okay? Um, so there are our three examples for dependent variable. So pause the video now and see if you can identify the dependent variable for each of these experiments, and we'll go through it after you've tried that. Okay, so what we've got then for number one is a student changes the volume of coffee she has drunk and measures her reaction time. So again, she's chosen to change the volume of coffee, and so the dependent variable is the other one, the reaction time, the one that we're measuring as a consequence of the change of independent variable over here. Number two, a student wants to know what the effect on the frictional force between two surfaces will be if he changes the force pushing the surfaces together. So again, he's changing the force pushing the surfaces together and is going to measure the effect on the frictional force between the two surfaces. Please don't forget to put the whole thing down, not just frictional force, all right, frictional force between the two surfaces. Be as specific as possible. And number three, a student is trying to find out the relationship between the length of the spring and the load hung from the end of the spring. Well, clearly, if you were doing that, you would choose to hang different loads from the end of the spring and measure the effect on the length. So, therefore, the length of the spring is the dependent variable in this experiment. And that's our dependent variable discussion.